What a special, magical place Detroit is. It's always been a symbol of America. It's the guts and glory, the gut check of our country. And I can see why now. Welcome to Explore. Never stop learning. everyone. This used to be one of the most prominent neighborhoods. It's called Boston Edison. And there's no one here. It's a ghost town. Behind me is a high school. Completely empty. Nobody's in it. Detroit was once the fourth most populated city in America. And now it's just so quiet. I came to Detroit to feel its soul. And I figured the best way was just to walk through the neighborhoods, one block at a time, and to see who I meet. What's up? I almost stole some lettuce from your way. <laughs> well, we're developing a program. Can I get a job? That's what we're working towards, man. Down. You got these buildings that's idle. You have people that's idle. And now it's time to transform these buildings, and then transform these buildings, you also transform the people. If you start here, and then you get the world to hear about this, you get the world to come here to see, and to, and to realize what's possible with nothing. This building was built in 1942, and they've been abandoned for the last 10, 12 years. The magic that's right here is kind of just waiting. If you were placed at a time capsule and you were just dropped off, you would hardly believe you were in the symbol of industry, strength, and innovation. And yet it will recycle. But if, you know, I'm walking through this building that's going to one day have so much life. Mm -hmm. And look at it now. It's just, no, it's wild. Detroit is bigger than New York. San Francisco and Boston combined. It was built for a city of two million. It's now less than 800,000. One third of that 134 square miles is now vacant. One third, every third house, every third space is open land or vacant land, or vacant buildings now. This is the Packard plant. From 1906 to 1956, it was Packard Automotive Motors. There's 55 buildings here that were all connected. 14, 15,000 people worked here. Everybody was related to the auto industry. And the phrase was, what's good for General Motors is good for America. That was the what's phrase. What's good for General Motors is good for America. Right. So because it, it was tied into the steel industry. I mean, if General Motors went on strike, 450,000 workers making 55% of the automobiles and trucks in the, in the country, all those people get laid off. If they have a bad well, year. But I'm saying now look around look you. Look around and you see. But that's, you know, what's good for GM is good for America. 
and this was the most robust industry of America, and we are in a ghost town right now. Talk about change. <sighs> Power of the past. Yep. The movement, you know, the circle. Absolutely. I hired it at a Ford plant in 1971. I spent 20 years on the line, painting underbody, uh, working in the trim shop. In 1980, there were 2,400 people working in my plant. In 88, eight years later, 40% fewer people were making the same amount of vehicles. Even 2002, one million auto workers and suppliers. It's down to like 600,000. We've lost 400,000 in the last 10 years. How are people gonna live? How are people, well, how are people gonna work again? What kind of work? You know, and that's what Detroit is. Detroit has been a place which says, hey, the jobs aren't coming back. The government or the corporations aren't gonna take care of this. We're not returning to the past. Look at this. I mean, this was the symbol of power, what I'm walking in, and now it's the symbol of decay. You think that Detroit's just been knocked out? Or is it coming back? It's it's just Detroit is out. Uh, Detroit is coming back, but it's, it's not, we're not returning to the past. The old middle class, the old American dream is dead. Look at these cars. Oxygen being flown into each one to preserve it. These are the automotive treasures. All these cars are being preserved for the future. We're truly entered Detroit's soul. Talk about memory lane. What you're looking at was the might of Detroit in its glory. This tree here with the shoes hanging out, that's called Souls of the Most High. And Tyree's grandfather, who helped him to create the project, at the age of 94, he recalled lynchings in the South, and he asked him if he could see the people, and he said he could see the souls. But what we're saying today is that we are lifting up the souls of the community. If you ask him, what's up with the dots? Tyree said, in addition to it celebrating you know, all races of people, he's going to say, life is just like a circle. It repeats itself. The cell, the sun, the moon, the stars, all of that. So it's, it's a repetition that we see. The car hood on that bench there, faces in the hood. What was this one called? It's actually called Souls on Fire. And then this piece with the lawnmower on top, it's called Haiti. Everything on this project is symbolic. Art and culture is going to be Detroit's new industry. It's been buried long enough under the wings of the godfather that will be the automobile industry. Their wings have been clipped. Now here we come. Now it's art and culture and grassroots and small businesses. And the, the small person has come back full circle. I remember when I was on trial for the Heidelberg Project, and the prosecutor said to me, stop. And I told him, I can't. I can't stop. Why should I stop? The city, to me, is like a canvas waiting on me. And you take advantage of that opportunity because it's calling you. So. I can't stop. It's a new day. Detroit might be where the new renaissance takes place. My father helped cherish for my life around. He, he challenged me to stop seeing the world through the eyes of a zone a thug. To finally see the world through the eyes of a human being, which demanded of me to behave like a human being. 
which put me on the path to be who I am today, a college graduate, an author, a bookstore owner, a community activist, a guy that's, that's doing, doing his part in making Detroit be better than what it is. In my 38 years, I, I've never seen a, a beautiful Detroit in the physical sense. We have third world conditions, which is nothing but undeveloped cities, undeveloped human beings that's ultimately b behaving in an undeveloped situation. This is King Solomon. This is where Malcolm X spoke. Go to the Waldorf Astoria. Go downtown to where the white people are, and you'll find the house Negro. Malcolm X spoke here, and who else? Uh, Martin Luther King, Thurgood Marshall, Martin came here first and did the I Had a Dream speech long way before they went took it to Washington and they marched down Woodward. Martin Luther King did I Had a Dream here? I Had a Dream in Detroit, way before they took it to Washington. And unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I have a dream this afternoon. Across the street, some of the most successful gospel artists in the country used to come here and perform. Right across the street from my house was White's Record Store, which was one of the most popular, legendary record stores in, in the state of Michigan. On any given day, you might have seen a Marvin Gaye, a Stevie Wonder, a Four Tops, a Diana Ross, right here in, in, the, uh, in White's, you know? I mean, this is a historic landmark, yeah. White's music store, and here it is now. This is just wild. It's wild that it's just in this condition. Yeah. It, it so it's like it's almost like Detroit, the city that lost its soul. Yeah. yeah. This is where all the boxers would come to train, right? Yeah, yeah. This is one of the uh, great American tragedies. I can only imagine how many lives that this place saved, how many lives that it gave purpose to, it gave direction, it gave meaning to. So when you close that door, you close the doors on thousands of lives that could have a, some form of opportunity, some form of an option that was different than the thug life, than the street life. And it's like the fight is out of Detroit. Yeah. It's like knockout. That's what it feels like, like it's been knocked out. I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily classify as being knocked out. I would say the wind has been knocked out of us. We're on our knees, you know, and we're trying to figure the way to get up. This is a land of innovation. This is a land of inventors. Henry Ford, Rosa Parks, Thomas Edison. There'll be another one that comes from here. Another great mind, another great innovator. But the difference is, this new great mind, they're gonna blend the best of industry with social equality, with morality. It's all gonna come together. Through this decay, it's gonna come rebirth. The 
role of church and faith is the fact that so many people love Detroit, have a lot of faith in Detroit. Detroit has taken a lot of hard knocks and they get a bad rap. But part of Detroit's problem is we put too much emphasis on manufacturing and plant type jobs, factory type jobs. And we didn't spend enough time thinking about how we can reinvent ourselves and think in terms of uh, what's going to happen in the future. Our greatest resource is our people and not what we produce. People are beginning to find out, oh, the resource is me. I'm the commodity. I'm the resource that's going to change the world. It's coming from the people. And that's what's going to happen in Detroit. We're going to become the city of entrepreneurs. Everybody's going to look up and there's going to be more entrepreneurs coming out of the city of Detroit because we can't do anything but reinvent it. Detroit has gone from Motown to Grovetown. We have these 70,000 vacant lots and a lot of people are rediscovering the earth Around these urban gardenings and around these urban farms are all of these people who are coming together in community. It cultivates the soul more than it plants. I gotta come back. Coffee cup. I need coffee cup. Yeah. Look, they we still have up. coffee cups here. Yeah. <laughs> Is that wild? <laughs> all this rumble and there's clean coffee cups. Coffee cups. <laughs> How do you bring people back, Charlie? We kind of send our young people away. Well, I think it's important that we keep them here, but you got to give them a reason. And I think this right here is a reason. As Americans are obsessed with the import-export economy, you know, trade surplus with China and all these things, and the one thing that Detroit has really excelled in is exporting its youth. And this art project is going to start importing the youth back it's going to become a symbol, and through, I believe, your use of color and imagery, it's just going to spread because it's going to draw people back into the heart of the city and re-nourish and replenish people. And it's going to be its own import economy because people are going to want to start living around here. I think this project will be an import, and that's exciting. Look at this. Calling the next yeah. Thomas Edison, calling the next Henry Ford, calling the next Rosa Parks. Yeah. We need you. My job as an artist and educator is how do I elevate the minds of people and take them into heaven? Get the world to elevate their way of thinking to a new level. To a new level. The last 150 years is marked by the Industrial Revolution. You gotta wonder what will be the next revolution. Detroit is gonna return to glory through simple things like farms, greenhouses, neighborhood watches, artists. They're paving the way and writing the language again. It's a place like no other. If you got the spirit, the tenacity, the determination to make things happen, this might be the place for you. One day this all will change, treat people the same. Stop with the violence, down with the hate. One day we'll all be free and proud to be under the same sun, singing songs of freedom like. One day, one day, Children will play.